So what about the Catholic Mass? Does the Bible support the Roman Catholic concept of ingesting the real presence of Jesus Christ in the bread of wine? Reference 1. Here's the title. If anyone eats of this bread in John chapter 6, does not refer to actual physical ingestion. I tell you the truth, he who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. Notice I went back a couple of verses to get the context. So all you had to do is believe, and you have everlasting life. If you don't go back far enough, you won't get that. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, talking about himself, which a man may eat and not die. So, oh, so somebody's got to actually physically ingest something. We just got through saying, he who believes has everlasting life. No physical ingestion here. It's figurative. I am the living bread. Now he declares, Jesus, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Let's make some observations here. Move this up a little bit and out and over. So, once more, Jesus says, I am the bread of eternal life. This is a figurative statement, since the context does not support Jesus referring to himself as a literal loaf of bread. Thus, Jesus compares the literal physical manna bread in the desert, which must be physically ingested repeatedly, to sustain the literal physical bodies of the forefathers, and then they literally physically die to, to the phys figurative or spiritual bread that comes down from heaven, which one may eat one time figuratively, i.e. believe in Jesus, to receive him spiritually, and not spiritually die, but have eternal life. So on the one hand, we have the repeated eating of physical, uh, physical bread, which sustains physical life, but only moment to moment until they physically die. And on the other hand, we have the figurative and spiritual bread who comes down from heaven, which a man may eat in a figurative and spiritual sense by a moment of faith and not die spiritually, but have eternal life. Thus, there is nothing in this section of John chapter 6 that demands that there be a literal physical eating of the flesh of Jesus. A figurative and spiritual cleaning meaning is portrayed in verse 50, which parallels the other eight statements of what one must do to have eternal life, which is believe in Jesus, the bread of life that came down from heaven. And interesting, you can say it over and over and over again, make it plain and clear, and then get a little figurative, and then go off on a tangent. Verse 51, John 6, 51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus continues, make it bigger here, continues to confront the unbelieving crowd. When somebody doesn't believe you, but Jesus did this all the time, he confronts them, pushing them to believe in him or totally reject him. Most of the time it's the latter. His message to those in the crowd who refuse to take him figuratively and spiritually becomes too graphic for them to be accepted literally. He simply said, believe on me. No, I can't accept that. So he says, eat my flesh, drink my blood. This pushes them to total rejection of him, such that they will no longer be his disciples or follow him around. And that's exactly what happened at the end of John chapter 6. He was left with just the 12. He reiterates <coughs> that he is the living bread that came down from heaven. And then he becomes very graphic when he says, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. There are many who insist that this phraseology of eating Jesus' flesh is to be taken literally in some manner, even today. However, normative rules of language, context, language, context, and logic direct one to take this figuratively and spiritually. For well, the context has already been developed with Jesus as the true bread, from heaven as a figurative and spiritual bread and not a literal loaf of bread already up to this point. Furthermore, the reception of this bread is established in previous verses by faith and not by actual physical ingestion. 
Note also that the literal translation or interpretation of physically eating the actual body of flesh of Jesus violates God's commandment against cannibalism. Finally, Jesus says, this bread is, is my flesh, which I will, future tense, give for the eternal life of the world. He hadn't done it yet, so he can't eat them now, even if that were to be effective. By cutting, carving them up and eating them there in the mount, <coughs> mountain there where he fed everybody with the six loaves and fishes, well, that would kill him. He didn't have a chance to get to the, the cross and die for sins. So this depicts a future event in which he will actually give of his physical body such that eternal life will be available for the world, a future event. So by virtue of a moment of faith in Jesus, as a result of his future sacrifice of his physical, bo physical body for the world, for sins, one receives eternal life. Since there is no actual bread indicated in this passage that is supernaturally transformed into the flesh of Jesus and offered to the crowd to physically ingest, as in the celebration of the Catholic Mass, and since cannibalism is forbidden, and since... Jesus at the time of this passage had not yet given of his physical body for the world at that time of John chapter 6. Then the concept of a literal physical ingestion of the flesh of Jesus in any format or form which was given for the world is not in view in this passage. Yet the Catholic Church keeps coming back to this passage as if they can editorialize it. The context must therefore remain figurative and spiritual and not literal and physical. So let's take a, a moment to corroborate this figurativeness and not literalness and further commentary on it from elsewhere in scripture. So the moment one believes in Christ, he has everlasting life. Everlasting being forever, it becomes a permanent possession of the one who believes at the moment he believes. And immediately after saying he who believes has everlasting life, our Lord reminds the Jews once more I am the bread of life. One must then consider that stating that one is the bread of life refers directly back to what he had just said. Believe in him, and one receives eternal life. It is not a suggestion that to literally ingest bread or anything in order to receive eternal life, but a figurative one. Let me fix this up. A figurative one referring to receiving eternal life via faith alone and Christ alone. It is also an authoritative expression. Our Lord claimed to be the source of all life and the provider of it. Note that the Bible declares that the source and provider of eternal life, even eternal life, is God himself. Massive amount of understanding there, yet the crowd largely went right over the top of their head. Look at Psalm 27.1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Job 33, 4. The Spirit of God has made me, the breath of the Almighty gives me life. So, continue. The temporary sustenance from manna versus the eternal life via the bread of life, Jesus Christ, is in view. Our Lord once again compares the temporary sustenance of eating the physical manna by the Israelites in the desert, yet they all inevitably died physically to himself, the bread compared to himself the bread of life which he says a man may eat and not die. The phrase and not die refers to the spiritual concept of eternal life which is received simply by believing in Christ the bread of life that provided for you. Having already established that eternal life is by faith alone in Christ alone in this discourse ten times up to this point we can determine that this verse but here is the bread that comes down from heaven which a man may eat and not die is a figure of speech relative to the phrase, which a man might eat, referring to one a one-time act of believing. Point three, which a man may eat, can, cannot refer to physical ingestion of our Lord's human flesh. Our Lord was not offering up his body to the crowd to physically devour at that time, when he said was figurative, not literal. John six thirty four to 35 Sir, they said, from now on give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life, he who comes to me will never hunger go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Notice that the crowd had previously requested that Jesus provide them from that moment on with the bread of life that Jesus was referring to so that they could receive eternal life. Notice our Lord's response at that time. He told them in verse 35, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Come means believe. Believe means believe. Faith alone and Christ alone unto eternal life is being presented clearly. 
repeatedly. Notice the absence of anything physical, such as providing food or even supernaturally or offering himself up so they could devour his actual flesh. Nothing was done in this respect in order to receive the better life except to tell the crowd to believe on him as Savior. Once one is born again in the spiritual realm, therefore, as opposed to performing any action in the physical realm, like physically ingesting bread and wine or flesh and blood. Look at John 3, 5 to 6. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. So it's a spiritual birth, nothing of uh, transformation or birth. It has nothing to do with the physical. So it requires another birth, one which is out of the renewing work of the Holy Spirit and out of the realm of the spiritual to become born again. This birth is brought about only by the Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. In John 3, 6, John reiterates, Jesus reiterates his answer to Nicodemus' question of how can a man be born when he is old, so that Nicodemus will not miss it. Flesh gives birth to flesh, the physical birth, but the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, gives birth to your dead spirit in the spiritual realm. There are two distinct realms. One is fallen man, the other the flesh, and the other is of God, the Holy Spirit, in the spiritual realm. A fallen man cannot regenerate himself, be reborn. He needs a divine operation in the spiritual realm. Only God, the Holy Spirit, can regenerate a human spirit, a dead human spirit. Man can do nothing. The words are clear. So such actions as water baptism, committing one's life to Jesus Christ, going to church regularly, etc., being in the realm of the flesh will do nothing to affect an actual in the action in the spiritual realm, such as to become born again with an alive spirit. Besides that, God's word prohibits the ingestion of blood or human flesh. Leviticus 17, 10 to 12, Any Israelite or any alien living among them who eats my any blood, <clears throat> I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut him off from the, his people. For the life of a creature is in the blood. I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Therefore I say to the Israelites, None of you may eat blood, nor may an alien living among you eat blood, meaning a non-Jew. Exodus 23:18. Do not offer the blood of a sacrifice to me along with anything containing yeast. The fat of my festival offerings must not be kept until morning. Leviticus 3:17. This is the lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Wherever you live, you must not eat any fat or any blood. Leviticus 7, 26, 27. And wherever you live, you must not eat the blood of any bird or animal. If anyone eats blood, that person must be cut off from his people. Is that any clearer than that? All right, Dr. Arnold Prechtenbaum, let me move this up, states in an email dated September 13, 2001, something that was forbidden in its lesser form would certainly be forbidden in its greater form. It was strictly forbidden to partake of blood of any kind in passages such as Genesis 9, 4, Leviticus 17, Deuteronomy 12. The primary emphasis of these passages is on animal blood. The, though the phrase all manner would include just that, all manner of blood which would be including human blood. At any rate, even if the focus is only on animal blood, if animal blood was forbidden, then clearly human blood would be forbidden as well. So BK say, says, Vanna met only a limited need. It provided temporary physical life. The Israelites came to loathe it, and ultimately they died. Jesus is a bread of a different kind. He is from heaven and gives life. A person who eats of the, that bread will not die. Since Jesus is the bread of life, what does eating this bread mean? Many commentators assume that Jesus was talking about the Lord's Supper. This passage may well illuminate the meaning of the Lord's Supper in relation to Christ's death, but since the Last Supper occurred one year later than the incidents recorded in this chapter, in chapter 6 of John, eating his flesh and drinking his blood should not be brought thought of as sacramentalism. Eating the living bread is a figure of speech meaning to behave, believe on him, like the figures of coming to him, listening to him, and seeing him, to eat of this bread is to live forever. Jesus' revelation about the bread was then advanced in that not only is the Father giving the bread Jesus, but also Jesus is giving himself. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Salvation is by the sacrificial death of the Lamb of God for sins. But his, by his death, life came into the world. Now let's look at St. Augustine. I was arguing with a lay monk about this, and it took him uh, sharp. It took him back. Augustine declared that our Lord was 
speaking figuratively, not literally, re reference the eating of his body and his blood. 